One of the bigger pain points of running your applications in the cloud is setting up all of the services that you need. So in this video, we're going to explore an AWS service that makes deploying .NET applications to the cloud incredibly simple. This service is called Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, and in this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide for setting up Amazon Elastic Beanstalk, configuring a database, and deploying a .NET application to AWS. I also want to say a special thank you to AWS for sponsoring this video and helping me bring AWS closer to the .NET community. I'm going to start by briefly explaining what problem Amazon Elastic Beanstalk solves. AWS has more than 100 services. And if you feel overwhelmed by the sheer number of services, just imagine how difficult it is to set up all of the services that you need to run an application. You need to set up a virtual private cloud, you need to configure your resources, you need to connect them with each other, define inbound and outbound rules, and then expose your application through an API gateway. So you can imagine that it's difficult to figure out how to get started with AWS. You might be confused with which services you should use to run your application, and you probably won't be able to figure out how to provision these services. In the teams that I worked on, we usually had a dedicated DevOps engineer that will be responsible for setting up an AWS environment, and then we could just deploy our code through a CI CD pipeline. However, many teams don't have the luxury of a dedicated DevOps engineer, so they also have to wear the DevOps hat. So the question I want to ask is, is there a simple way to deploy a .NET application to AWS Cloud? And the AWS team has an answer with a service called Amazon Elastic Beanstalk. Elastic Beanstalk is an easy to use service for deploying and scaling web applications. Here's what it looks like to use AWS Elastic Beanstalk. What it offers is a way to deploy and scale web applications. You're going to start by setting up an Elastic Beanstalk instance, and this will allow you to set up the initial infrastructure that's required to host your application code. You can deploy your code through a zip file, or through Visual Studio, and I'm going to show you how to do this later in this video. And what Beanstalk is going to do is it will take care of provisioning the resources that you need to run your application. So this could be a CloudFormation infrastructure as code, an EC2 instance to run your application, an S3 bucket if you need object storage, you can also configure CloudWatch for logging, a database to store your application's data, and so on. I'm guessing many of you are going to ask this question, so how much does Elastic Beanstalk cost? And the answer is it's completely free to use. But, and there's always a but, right? The underlying resources are not free. So you might have expected this. Elastic Beanstalk just gives you a way to set up an environment where you can host your applications. So you're not actually paying for using Elastic Beanstalk, but you are paying for the underlying compute, which could be an EC2 instance, the virtual private cloud, using CloudWatch for logging, or a database for storing your application's data. And because Amazon Elastic Beanstalk has built-in support for .NET, we're going to be using it to deploy our .NET application to the cloud and configuring it with an RDS database. So let's go to the AWS console and let me show you how to set up an Elastic Beanstalk instance. From the AWS console, let's go ahead and look for Elastic Beanstalk and I'm going to open up the Elastic Beanstalk service. I'm going to say create a new application and this is going to lead us to a wizard where we can set up our Elastic Beanstalk instance. What we are configuring here is an Elastic Beanstalk environment that is going to contain the resources that we need to host our application. And the first thing we get to choose is which environment tier we want to set up. You get to choose between a web server environment and a worker environment. And because I want to run a web API, I'm going to choose web server environment. Then we get to give our application a name and I'm going to call this the EBS, which is short for Elastic Beanstalk, and then I will say Catalog API, because this is the name of the application that I will be deploying from Visual Studio. Then let's head down and configure our environment name. Now, you could give this a descriptive name. For example, I could call this the development environment because I will be using it for development. In the same way, you could also have a production environment, a staging environment, and so on. We get an option to choose a custom domain name for our application. I'm going to leave this blank and let AWS generate some random value for us. Then let's pick the actual platform that we are going to be deploying, and I want to deploy a .NET Core application running on a Linux server. You can also choose which .NET version you want to run. I will be running .NET 8 because it's the latest version, and then for the platform version, we're just going to use the default option. The next thing we get to configure 
is where the application code will be coming from and you can choose between a sample application, uploading your own code, which you can do from S3, or a local file that you can upload, and there should be a zip file. I'm going to choose sample application because I will be deploying the application later from Visual Studio. The next thing that you can configure is how many instances of your application you want to be running. I'm just going to choose single instance, but be aware that you can also choose a high availability setup with multiple instances of your application running at the same time. Let's go ahead and click next. This is where we get to set up an IAM role for our Elastic Beanstalk instance and for our Elastic Compute service. So let's go ahead and choose create and use a new service role. And I'm going to give this a custom name. Let's say EBS catalog API and then role. When it comes to the EC2 role, we will have to create this manually. So let's head over to the IAM service, which is short for identity and access management. And I will navigate to the roles tab and from here, I can create a new role. Let's choose AWS service as the trusted entity type because we want to be accessing our EC2 instance. And then for the use case, let's go ahead and also choose EC2. You can leave the default use case here and then let's click next. The next thing we need to do is to assign a permission to our role. And I'm going to look for Beanstalk and the role that I want to assign. And the permission that I want to assign is the AWS Elastic Beanstalk web tier permission. So let's go ahead and include this policy and then I will click next. Let's go ahead and give our role a name. I will call it EBS Catalog API EC2 role. And then let's go ahead and create this role. With our role created, I will go back to our Beanstalk setup. I'm going to refresh here and our new role should be available. So now that we've picked our two IAM roles, let's go ahead and click next. Here we can set up our networking and our database. So for the virtual private cloud, I'm going to choose the default cloud that gets created when you create an AWS instance. I'm going to choose the default virtual private cloud. Then we can configure our instance and we can choose the subnets inside of the virtual private cloud that we're going to be using. I'm just going to pick all of them. Then when it comes to our database, I'm also going to choose all of the subnets and I'm also going to click enable database. This is going to allow me to set up an RDS instance that I want to be using inside of my Beanstalk setup. This might take a moment to load, so be a little patient. And the first thing I'm going to choose is the Postgres database engine. You will see that is going to reload the required settings so that I can configure my Postgres instance. And I'm going to use the latest version, which is 16.3. You can also configure your database size. Here are all of the instance sizes that you can choose from. Let's just go with T3 small because I'm only going to be using this for a demonstration. For the storage size, I'm going to configure 10 gigabytes. And then you want to assign a username and password to your Postgres instance. I'm going to use the default names, although you want to use something more secure for the password. And then for the availability, I'm going to choose just one availability zone. And when I delete my Beanstalk service, I also want to delete my database instance. If you don't want this behavior, you can configure something different by choosing create snapshot or retain. Going forward, we can choose some tags. With our networking and database setup completed, let's go ahead and click next. From this screen, we get to configure the EC2 instance that we are going to be using to run our application. You can choose which type of storage you want to be using. I'm going to be using the default value, but you can pick from a magnetic drive and an SSD. The default settings are going to give me eight gigabytes of storage. Then you want to configure your CloudWatch setup. Let's leave the monitoring interval to five minutes. Then you can configure your EC2 security groups. I'm just going to choose the default group. You can also configure the number of compute instances that you want to be running. You can choose between a load balance instance where you will have multiple instances of your application or a single instance, which I'm going to choose. Let's leave everything else with the default option. Here you can choose the size of your EC2 instance. I'm going to be using T2 small because this is just a demonstration. And then let's go ahead and click next. On the next screen, you can configure your monitoring setup. I'm just going to choose basic health monitoring. When it comes to manage platform updates, I'm going to deactivate that. You can also set up an email to receive notifications, how you're going to be applying updates during deployment. I'm going to leave everything with the default values. Here you can also configure your proxy server. Let's use Nginx, which is also the default value. And then you can configure a few additional Amazon services like Amazon X-Ray and S3 log storage. And if your instances should be streaming logs to CloudWatch, I'm going to activate this with the 
default retention value. And the last thing we get to set up is environment properties. This is where you could configure your ASP.NET Core environment, for example. So let's go ahead and provide that value. So I'll say ASP.NET Core underscore environment, and then let's give it a value of development. Let's go ahead and click next. From the last screen, you can review the setup that you have in place, which we configured through the Elastic Beanstalk Builder. And if we are satisfied with everything, we can click submit, and this is going to create our Elastic Beanstalk instance. So you can see our Elastic Beanstalk instance is created, and it's going to take a few minutes to set up all of the resources that are inside of our environment, which includes an EC2 instance, a database, CloudWatch, an API gateway, and also deploying the default application. So I'm going to wait a few minutes for all of this to complete, and then I'm going to show you what we have set up. If you want to watch this live, you can go to the events tab underneath, and you can see a stream of events telling you what is the current step in the process of setting up your Elastic Beanstalk instance. After a few minutes, you will see that your Elastic Beanstalk environment was successfully launched and you can proceed with deploying your application. The first thing I suggest you do is that you open up your default domain name and you will see the placeholder application that was deployed by AWS. We're going to be replacing this with our .NET Web API. From here, you can also check out the health of your instance. Right now, this is empty because we don't have any requests. You can also go to the monitoring tab where you can see what is the CPU utilization of your instance, how much network address you are using, and so on. If I open up the RDS service and the EC2 service, as well as CloudFormation, you can see that Elastic Beanstalk has set up a Postgres database for us. So here is the RDS database that we can use to store the data for our application. The important thing here is going to be the endpoint that you can use to connect to your Postgres instance. We're going to be specifying this in our connection string in our ASP.NET Core setup, or actually we're going to be passing this as an environment variable. Then if I head over to the EC2 instance, you can see there is one instance that was also configured with Elastic Beanstalk, and this is the instance that's going to be running our application. So here you can see some setup for this instance. And then in the CloudFormation service, you can see the CloudFormation stack for our Elastic Beanstalk. And if you head over to the Resources tab, you can see everything that was set up with Elastic Beanstalk. For example, here is our RDS database. Now I'm going to close all of this down. And what I want to do is to update my environment variable for my Elastic Beanstalk instance. So if I head over to configuration and I scroll down to the bottom, I can set up my environment variables. So let me click edit here and I'm going to add another environment variable from the bottom that I will call the connection string. So this is going to be connection strings and then double underscore database. And then I'm going to pass in my connection string value that's pointing to my RDS instance. So this is the endpoint that I mentioned earlier. And this is actually the way I'm going to pass in a connection string to my .NET Core application. So let me click apply. And this is going to update my Elastic Beanstalk instance. And then let's head over into Visual Studio and let me show you how we are going to deploy our .NET application to AWS. This is the .NET 8 application that I'm going to be deploying to Elastic Beanstalk. And this is a very basic setup. I just have an EF Core database context, a few CRUD endpoints for updating a product entity in a Postgres database. You can see I'm connecting to my Postgres instance from the database connection string, which is the environment variable that we just set up. And I'm also configuring the Swagger UI and applying database migration if we are running in the development environment. Now, in order to deploy this to AWS, you can right click on your project file and click publish to AWS. This is made available with the AWS toolkit for Visual Studio, which I recommend that you install. It's going to make working with AWS services much easier. And you can see that my Elastic Beanstalk environment is automatically discovered. So I'm just going to choose my Elastic Beanstalk and click publish. I will say yes, and this is going to start the publish process. It's first going to publish my .NET 8 application, and it's going to zip up all of the DLLs. Then it's going to upload these files to an S3 bucket, and after that, it's going to deploy my .NET application to the EC2 instance configured inside of Elastic Beanstalk. As the deployment is progressing, we are going to be getting the updates here in the console. So you can see that right now, the environment update is starting and we are updating the configuration settings for the development environment that we configured earlier. And after a few moments, the deployment is going to complete. You're going to get a success message here, and you can navigate to your website to see your .NET application. If I navigate to the default URL for my web API, I'm not going to get anything because I don't have anything configured. But if I head over to Swagger 
and considering that I set up this to be a development environment, I'm going to be greeted by the Swagger user interface. And now I should be able to send a post request to create a new product, and this is going to be persisted inside of my RDS instance. So you can see I get a response back. If I query for some products, you will see that we also get a response back. So our web API is now running inside of an EC2 instance that's configured to connect with the RDS database, and we can use it to store our application's data. If I send a delete request, it's going to get rid of this product. And if I send another request, I'll get a 404 not found. So I can go ahead and create a fresh product. And finally, when I fetch all of the products, you will see that I get the second product that I've created with the respective identifier. So you saw how incredibly easy it was to publish a .NET 8 application to an Elastic Beanstalk environment. And one more thing I want to show you is how to terminate your Elastic Beanstalk instance once you are done using it, you can navigate to the Elastic Beanstalk environment, click Actions, and then Terminate Environment. And this is going to tell you all of the services that are also going to be deleted. This includes the URL, where your application is hosted, the RDS database, an EC2 instance, and so on. If I specify the name of my environment here, and then click Terminate, this is going to start the process and clean up any AWS resources that were configured with Elastic Beanstalk. If you are looking for another way to host your applications on AWS, then you should check out AWS Lambda. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Elastic Beanstalk, and until next time, stay awesome.